The Siege of Orison is a great FPS focused event that takes place a shuttle ride away from the main city of Orison at Crusader. I've done it a bunch of times so far and I really enjoy it, despite not really being an FPS guy. I have noticed a lot of confusion about how the mechanics work, so I wanted to make a quick video about what I've learned about the event so far in hopes of helping folks out who are getting stuck. So let's get into it. The Siege is first and foremost an FPS event, but it does have elements of ship and vehicle based play. It's the closest we've gotten to marrying ships, vehicles, and FPS all in one and that's really exciting. It's primarily a PvE event, you're part of a civilian defense force that's coming to Crusaders 8 to take on the Ninetales gang, who've taken control of some of the floating platforms. Crusader themselves aren't able to bring the force of their own ships down because the Ninetales have activated an iffy, an identify friend or foe inverter which basically makes the platform's automated defenses shoot the good guys instead of the bad guys. Your job is to go in and disable the iffy and take out the Ninetales boss. Even though it's a PvE event, there's a lot of players who are coming in just to gank unsuspecting players, so you'll ideally want to go with at least one or two other people so you can revive each other when downed. While it's possible to start out lightly armed and loot as you go, I'd highly recommend getting at least a medium armor set, a medgun, a backpack, and your weapon of choice with lots of ammo. I recommend the backpack because it easily lets you take off your helmet to eat and drink and it can carry about 40 clips of ammo which will let you not have to worry about looting dead bodies. This is because unless you've got a party covering you, looting leaves you really vulnerable to getting killed by enemy respawns, which happen really frequently and can happen right on top of you. On your way to Orison, you can stop by Port Olisar and orbit over Crusader which sells all of the gear you need except the medgun but you can get that at Orison General Hospital where you should stop anyway to set your regeneration point. If you don't want to bother with that, you can get some light armor, a shotgun, and a pistol at the Kel 2 convenience store in Stratus Mall, but you won't be able to carry nearly as much ammo. Once you're kitted out, grab the priority mission for the siege event, grab the call to arms mission to get the additional 500 alpha UEC per kill payouts, and head on over to the rooftop of the Crusader showroom which is where you can catch the shuttle to the mission area. The showroom is conveniently on the same platform as the hospital and the green circle habs where you log in if you're staying at Orison, so Cloudview platform is your one stop shop for this event. The mission area consists of four platforms, each swarming with Ninetales activity. There's a shuttle service that'll take you back and forth between three of the platforms, but to get to the fourth you'll need to use the various ships that are located on the rooftops of the buildings on the platform. More on that later. The only way into the mission area is via the shuttle service, so you can't bring your own ships into the area. You're first dropped off at Solonsky platform and you have to fight your way through the Ninetales to their lieutenant. Every platform has one lieutenant and you have to kill them all to get the main boss to show himself. As soon as you step off the shuttle, be ready for combat. Both players and NPCs could engage you at any time. Once anyone with the mission has killed the lieutenant and looted their body, everyone will get access to a code, which they can use to unlock the shipping containers on that platform. Some of the shipping containers will contain meds, some will contain guns and ammo, and some will be empty. Only one will contain the inverter, and it can take some time to find since it can be anywhere outside or on any building rooftops. The goal here is to find the inverter on each platform and disable it so that you can safely get ships off that platform. Once you're done with Solonsky platform, you can take the shuttle to Brushwood platform where you do the same thing again. And from there, you'll be able to get to Hartmore platform which is the last platform connected by shuttles. On Hartmore platform, you can also find the shuttle connection back to the first platform and re-enable that shuttle link to help reinforcements get back to the action faster. Remember, until you've disabled the inverters, you can't just fly ships straight to the next platform because you'll get blasted by lots of anti-aircraft fire. But once the inverters are disabled, you can fly back and forth between the platforms freely. Once you've killed the three lieutenants on Solonsky, Brushwood, and Hartmore, you're ready to make your run at the admin center. The only way to get there is by commandeering the ships that are on the rooftops and flying there. But beware because the anti-aircraft fire is going to still be shooting. Fortunately by this point you'll have unlocked the military ships on the Hartmore platform which include the Inferno, Ion, and the A2 Hercules. The Hercules is tanky enough to land on the platform and give the pilot enough time to get out of the ship before it explodes, so that's your best bet. I don't know if there's actually a way to disable the turrets before you get there or if there's a good safe spot to land, but in the 6 completed missions I've been in, everyone always did this under fire. 
If anyone knows a better way, let me know in the comments and I'll pin a comment with the summary of everyone's suggestions. Once you're safely there, you'll want to be a bit more careful since you've got a limited supply of ships, so any deaths are much more costly. Find and take out the 4th Lieutenant to make the boss Mendo Ren show himself. He'll be on a cargo barge which is docked with one of the buildings on the admin center. Make your way there on foot and once you take him out, you'll get the 4th code. Find the right shipping container and disable the 4th inverter and you've beaten the mission. At this point, you will need someone to come get you and give you a ride back to Solonsky platform though. Or you can just log out and log back in. If you suspected this is a long mission, you're right. You'll most likely need to heal and eat and drink so it's useful to know where to find these things. You'll find red containers peppered throughout the mission area and these will always contain food and water. They're pretty common at the ground floor of buildings with a lobby area like this one. You'll also find ammo containers throughout the mission area and these are nice not only to restock your ammo but they can also contain loot only guns like snipers and grenade launchers. Be really careful when looting though, I've died multiple times while looting ammo containers in a room that I had already cleared out due to fast respawns. If you need to heal yourself with a medgun, you can bring it out by pressing 4 and then pressing B to aim it at yourself. Left click to activate it still. You can also just use the red med pens, but a med gun is easier to use on other people and you'll likely get plenty of opportunities to come to other people's rescue throughout the mission. Just note that not all injuries can be fully healed up by the med gun, and some will require a medical bed. Fortunately, you can find med beds in the mission area. These are always located in buildings on the floors with a gym, just to the right of the elevator exit. The buildings on each platform are named, so once you find one, you can tell everyone else in chat where it is so that everyone can heal up. There's plenty of maps all over the ground floor of the mission area that can help you find out where you are, and they mark your current location with the red dot. There's lots of vehicles available in the mission area too, which can make it easier to move around safely. There's golf carts, APCs, cyclones, and even tanks. Some you'll find lying around, and some you'll find inside of the transport ships. Honestly, the only vehicle I bothered with is the golf cart, because most roads are too narrow or cluttered for the other vehicles. The last thing I want to mention is the schedule that Siege of Orison will be running for. These are the dates and times that we know so far, but just like Xenothreat, Ninetales Lockdown, and Jumptown, I'd expect they bring it back semi-regularly since clearly a ton of work went into it and it's a lot of fun. So that's all I've got for the Siege of Orison. It's not the fastest way to make money in the verse, but it's a ton of fun, especially if you've got a group going. I started every mission as a solo player, and most times I ended up partying up with other random players and we had a great time working together to complete the mission, or blow up while trying. I hope you enjoy it too, and I hope you've liked this video. Cheers.